Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games, and in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to use views and accommodate for them inside of GameMaker Studio 1.4. Now, I'm doing a another video on GameMaker Studio 2 later because it has changed so much between the versions, GMS2 has cameras, totally new functions, so that'll be later. But in this one, we're going to use GameMaker Studio 1.4. And we're going to make a project that looks something like this. I'm going to have a cube that I can move around with my mouse, kind of like a player, and I'm going to be drawing some text and a sprite on the screen. And then as I move the cube through different viewpoints, they are going to stay exactly where they are. So even though the player is moving, the text on the screen, the sprite that's being drawn, is going to stay exactly where it is because I'm accommodating for the view changing by using the view functions. And we are going to dive into that right now. So the first thing we're going to need is a couple of sprites. We're going to go ahead and make those right here. I'm going to name one SPR square and edit, create a new one, 64 by 64. And I'm just going to do a fill. I'm going to do a nice little blue. Click OK, center it. Make one more sprite while we're up here. Call this SPR circle. I'm going to create that 64 by 64 as well double click and I'm going to click on this ellipse circle option do a nice teal right click to fill that in that way and voila center that once more and now we have our two sprites next thing we're going to need is our object we're going to need two objects for this actually we're going to need obj square and we're going to assign that our sprite that we already made then we're going to make another object called obj system or it can be anything you want really but this is going to be an object that holds the view that we currently want to be shown on the screen and we'll get to that in a little bit but we don't have to worry about it just yet inside of here though we are going to add an event we're going to add create we're going to add a piece of code i'm just going to say true cube equals false we'll get to this in just a second right after we add a step event and throw in some code what we're going to do here is just out of sake of being lazy, I'm going to say if true cube, let me increase the size of this text for you. If it's a true cube, then we're going to say x equals mouse x and y equals mouse y. And the way this is going to work is inside of our new room we're going to make right now, we are going to throw in this object. We're going to come in here to creation code by right clicking on it. I'm going to type true cube equals true. And I'm also going to change the color of it so that we can distinguish it very easily. And then we're going to come into views. All right. Now, views in GameMaker Studio 1.4 are fairly simple, but even them being that simple can still be confusing. So there are two options. Uh, that you need to know about first. It is view in room and port on screen. And to make sure you click enable the use and visible when room starts. If those aren't clicked, the views aren't going to do anything. And just so that you know, all of these settings, everything you see right here, can be altered through code when your game is running, which can be very handy. But the two things we're going to look at are the view in the room and the port on the screen. So the port on the screen, the second option right here, is the actual size of the window that will pop up when your game is running. So if I click F5 and I run this, we're going to get a window that is 1024 by 768. This right here is that size. That's what it is. Now, we can change that by coming over here to 640 by 480, and the window itself is actually going to change the size. You see here, now it is much smaller. So that's nice, but then what is the view in the room? Well, that is what it is capturing inside of it. So you can't see it very well, but there's a white border around this whole room because that's the size that it is right now. So if I change this to something like 500 and 500, now you can kind of see these white lines right here. That is what's going to be displayed on your port. That's what's actually going to be visible as your game is running. So if you're if you have anything out here, it's not going to be visible while it's running. Now, and a very important thing to note is that this view in the room and this port on screen, 
they need to have resolutions that are similar in the sense that it is not going to distort your sprites. So if I had this and I said something more along like this, width of 600 and a height of 300, our square is no longer going to look very square. It is going to look much more like a rectangle. And this will only get worse the more distorted the view and the port become. Because the view in our room right now, it is 600 by 300 and you can see it here, and it has to fit this very much of a rectangle onto a very much of a square uh, window right here. And to do that, it has to mash it up and it distorts your sprites. If that's something you want, that's great, and now you know how to do it. But if it's not what you're going for, you want to make sure that these resolutions kind of match, usually in increments of 32, so 640 by 480, both uh, increments of 32. And you can do, you know, 1024 by 768. Uh, that's what it was before, and that's double that. So that'll just make everything look a lot smaller, but it will retain its correct proportions and shape. So just keep that in mind as you are working. Now I'm going to bring this down, ooh, bring it down to 640 by 480 so we can move around inside of here. Now we are using view zero, and this is important because if you change different views, you have to be able to accommodate for that. And what we want to do is say object following obj square. After we do that, we can come into objects and we're going to add in some more object squares just so that you can kind of see that we are actually moving around. So if I press F5 right now, because we've set our true cube to follow our mouse, we should be able to move around. So you see that? Perfect. So nice and simple movement system. Now, before we forget, let's add in our OBJ system, and now let's actually talk about what it's going to do. Because we need to load it up, and we're gonna add a create event. And for now, it's just going to hold one line of code. All we need to do is say global dot current view equals view, uh, let's say zero, let's just do that. So this is going to be a global variable that holds the current view that we are using inside of our game. Now this can change because views, you can have up to eight of them. And you can have multiple ones on screen at the same time, which you could use for split screen. And you can change them, and you can do a lot of different things. But for our drawing purposes, we need to know which view is on the screen, because we're going to be using some functions that use that current view, and then get the coordinates back. Now there is a function or a built-in property of views called view current, but this is only available inside of the draw event. So if you're using this inside of the draw event, you're good to go because it will return the actual view that is enabled currently in your room. But a lot of times you might be doing things that aren't inside of your view, inside of your draw event, like creating a script. So let's create a script. And we're gonna call this get view x. What we're going to do is to simplify this. So this script is going to return the middle. Well, actually, you can return anywhere. And the way we're going to do that is by using some built-in properties. We're going to say view x view. Now, if I middle click on this, it's going to load up the help manual. And you can actually kind of get a feel for what this is. So the view x view and the view y view are both going to return the top left portion of the view wherever that may be. So here you can see it's 32 and 228 because this is the whole room. But this returns the top left of that. And with that information right there, you can actually get any position in your room pretty easily. So you can get the top left through here, but if you come into this, you can actually get the H view and the W view, which is the, uh, the, the height and the width of the view as you can see right here. So then you can get the bottom right coordinate fairly easy and the top left coordinate fairly easily. Now I'm going to show you a way to actually get the middle and then you can use that as a function and just get the middle of your view every time. Of course if you don't want it in the middle then you can create a script for whichever position you want and just call it for there. But what we are going to do is say view x view and we're going to say global.currentView and you can change this 
and then as a different view comes up, you'll still be able to draw things exactly where you want them. Plus, view, we're going to put these in parentheses, view w view, and now it's important to note that these are square brackets, and they are square brackets because that's the way you access them. They are an array. And so when you're using them, you need to make sure that you're telling it which view you're trying to get information from. So use those square brackets there. That's kind of an important thing to note. View w view, square brackets again, uh, global dot current view. And we're going to divide that by two. And then at the very front, we're actually going to say return. Because in a script, you can get the function, the values back by using return. So that's actually going to get the very middle of our room. And the way we're going to know that is inside of our step code. We're going to say, uh, actually, not here. We're going to do a add event mouse left button, add in some code. Same kind of thing. We're going to say if true cube. Ooh. There we go. We're going to show a message here, and it's just going to say um, get view x. And remember, you have to call it like a function because a script is a function that you build. So I'm going to run this, and we're going to get the middle x coordinate of wherever we're at inside of our game when we left click. So 320. So let's move, and now it is 555. So that right there knows where we are at all the time. So let's go ahead and add one more script. And this one, as you can probably guess, is going to be get view y. And this is really simple. If we come into the get view x, copy it, and paste, we can actually do pretty much exactly the same thing, except say view y view and view h view. There we go. I'm not going to update that because I don't think we need to. But now what we're going to do is actually in the draw event, I'm going to show you that this is working and that you can use it in whatever game you are working on as well. We're going to say first draw self, otherwise none of the cubes will show up. And then we're going to say if true cube, so I only want this to come up once, and we're going to say draw, man. I really like those square brackets today. We're going to say draw text, get, uh, what was that? It was get view x, call it as a function, get view y, call it as a function, and we're going to say greetings this time. We'll close that. Then we'll also draw a sprite, just to show you that it works, whatever you're drawing on the screen. We're going to call the circle, zero, and then get view x get view y and I'm already messing up too you can see you can call it but if you forget to actually put in these brackets you might not get an error but it is not going to function properly so get view y we're gonna say plus uh, 60 and that's all we need to do so if we press F5 and run this it is now going to draw those things on our screen exactly where they should be even when we move around and that is really all there is to it. There are a lot of options when it comes to views, and you can uh, get a feel for that if you actually come into the manual and come down to views. These are all of the options that are there for you. But if you want to draw um, a GUI on your screen, if you want to have an inventory up, uh, as I've gotten a lot of questions about, and you moving around and keep it where it's supposed to be, this is how you want to do it. Now, just be sure that anything that you're trying to keep on the screen, it needs to be inside of a step event, so you're moving the object that is drawing where it should be, or inside of the draw event so that it's always moving itself. Because if you just create the object in the correct place using these functions and then move, well, everything is still going to be messed up because it's staying in that one spot. So just make sure you're using an event that is continually updating like the draw or uh, the step event or an alarm if you wanted to do it that way. I don't know why you would. But hey, that is what I've got for you today. Hopefully you found that useful. If you'd like to see anything else, if you'd like to see more of this, just let me know. Um, I love hearing from you guys. And yeah, so that's all. Thanks for joining me. 
As always, have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later. If you find the content on my channel useful and you like it, consider supporting me on Patreon. All of the people on the screen are doing so, and they are awesome, and they get rewards, and you can join them. So, uh, thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day. <laughs>